So guys, we're recording. What's life like now, Cass? You have all the time in the world now. Dude. <laughs> Fucking loser. <laughs> the A, man. I come here for some for some positivity. I'm I'm met with That was Josh. actually a genuine question. Like there was no dig. I know it I could have insi- I could have like added inflection to make it sound like an asshole, but it was actually a genuine question. Well, people don't know. We we started we got here like 5 minutes ago. Kasim's just been being rude to me the whole time we've been waiting for Jamie. I asked him to turn on a light in his background. He hasn't eaten in 24 hours. He's like, oh, what do you got a light there? Yeah, I was like, like hey, can you turn there. on a light back there? Dude? He's like, what's your problem? Oh, yeah. How many times I got to tell you? Why haven't you eaten? Can't afford I'm, I'm it. Busy. <laughs> I'm busier now. Yeah. Tough times? I'm not getting paid. <laughs> I've been so busy. I'm streaming. I've got meetings. These are right. all things unemployed people say. Hmm. Yeah, but they're you true. Find they're me cliche, on but they're true. You can find me on Twitch. I've decided to uh, uh, go to Twitch and absolutely dominate the platform. So for the first time in a long Good time, I wrote down wrote down a bunch of stuff for us. Oh, by the way, my toe is okay. I appreciate everybody writing me on Instagram, checking on my toe. But it got fucked up, guys. I'm not going to show my toe because then I'm not ever, I don't want like footage on the internet of me, like holding like a mangled toe ever. You'll break the internet. Well, tell no, us what happened. Cause might. all, all we had was your text okay. to say that you, you dropped a knife on your toe. That's all we have. Do you want this story? I hear sometimes people comment that they don't like the way I tell stories. So I don't want to start a pod if I'm going to give like a fucked up story. I think me and Kasim just had the exact same reaction. Uh, Gabby's got to, Gabby's <laughs> got to, Gabby's got to make that a little thing because I've never heard anyone say that. Who says really? that? I felt like I read a few comments that were like, Jamie's terrible at telling stories. That's just Cutter on fake accounts. <laughs> yes. Oh, it might be. <laughs> she should go give be. her man a back All right. Briefly, this is what's happened. What happened, guys? It was in like the course <laughs> of like a 24 hours where the energy in my house was fucked. Oh, like here we go. something was going on. Like I dropped a yeah. container and glass went everywhere. Our air conditioner broke. Jack vomited all over my bed. Like, and the, so when the air conditioner broke and like everyone's just energy was off. I got everyone out of the house and the AC people were coming in. I'm leaving for Albuquerque later that day. Oh no, I'm leaving for New York. The next morning, like four in the morning, my mom got there. I'm trying to get her settled. AC broke. They're replacing it. When they bring the old one down, it makes this dust bomb. Oh, and the bathrooms are being worked on with a plumber. So I have like maybe 15 men in my house Mm -hmm. while this is all happening. And like my ceiling is open. The bathrooms are like people walking Mm -hmm. dirty feet. It's driving me bananas. And when the dust bomb come off, like my instinct and like my nervous, like, how do I control this situation that makes feels like it's like hell is cleaning. So I just start fucking going. And then when I say cleaning, I'm like cleaning like handles and like cabinets. And I got to the, the wooden knife block thing where you put in all your knives and it was covered in dust. So I like took a washcloth and wet it and I was wiping it down and it mm-hmm. tilted mm-hmm. and I went to catch them so I didn't move away and I heard the sound of clink, like of it coming out like two or three and one landed perfectly horizontal across my big toe and it just split open and was gushing blood do you know which knife it was you know how it was the second to the- biggest not the bread Did it have one, a curve? but the other one. Did it have a curve or is yep. it a straight? It had a bit of a curve. Bam. King. And I and it, it didn't even hurt, right? For like the first 10, 15 seconds. Because at first you it happened so fast, I didn't feel it. I looked down. I t- t- took the knife out of my foot. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like I'm trying to think like am I going to have to like sew my toe back together? Like what's going on? <laughs> and I just hit the ground and I didn't say anything because Nene was there and I didn't want her to worry. So for like 40 minutes, I was just wrapping paper towel and just sitting there. And finally the AC guy walked by. He's like, 
miss, are you okay? <laughs> and Nene's like, what happened? And I'm like, oh, I just like cut my foot a little uh, bit. And I opened it. I swear to God, you guys, I was holding it for 30 minutes. The second I opened it up, like a volcano of blood again. So uh, it ended up, thank God, my nanny um, has like nursing school and certificates. So she's pretty versed in like stuff like that. And she came over and she's like, no, your skin is closing. You're going to be okay. But it still hurts like a motherfucker. And I have bandaid on it, but I'm so going to be hit the part. It hit you, the part of your toe b- below the nail, my big toe in the middle of my big toe, literally yeah. directly down the middle. Horizontal. But it, I mean, had it been a few inches up on the top of my foot, you guys, this would be a very different. I don't know if I would RIP Jamie. That might have been the end of me, guys. Wow. That's what a harrowing story. I actually. That would be such a sad. A comment on your I actually don't know why, but I thought of that. Maybe I was like, hi, a, a couple of weeks ago. But I remember thinking, I was like, if I died, what would Robin Kassam's next pajama pants be like? Like, how would it open? Is that fucked up that I thought that? <laughs> would Would we have a pod? Would we? I think you guys would come back and like you know how much I love this. Take a week off. I don't think you would stop it completely. A week off. How like how much time do you think we would? I think we have to come up like we have to do this like the three Zoom thing. But in Jamie's, it's like the tombstone. Yeah. Like (laughs) R.I.P. You know, beloved sister. Oh my god! Can we do an episode? Where you just call people we know and we pretend I died and I just get to listen to everything. <laughs> well, they do this now, but you don't have to pretend you died. They do living funerals. People do oh. that. I had one basically on one of my birthdays. What do you mean? Basically? Oh, yeah. Meaning like it, it fell into this moment where everyone just kind of went around in a circle and told me what I meant to them. It, but it happened by accident. It wasn't like, planned it wasn't like everyone sit down and tell jamie why you love her like nothing at all but rob you made a face is this sort of like does this fall into the category of gender reveal to you is this like that that no no no. i made a face like i knew what i knew what she was talking about i I wasn't like poo-pooing this poo-pooing like no i'm saying when i brought up funeral living funerals you made oh that yes yes yeah i just i hate when people like name something and then it becomes like a trendy thing and i just I your just family it. just had a gender reveal i just yeah, but J- jamie need to a, talk about that a, 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 i could hate a gender reveal and people could do it. a living funeral like come on that's a fuck that's just like uh, i uh, like me 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 like i want to know what happened when if i like it's like jesus christ like yeah. go go for a walk oh my yeah. god well yeah what is a gender reveal i mean do we want to elaborate tell us Tell us what happened there. Yeah, my uh, my brother is having a girl, so I'm going to be an uncle to a baby girl. Yeah, but how'd they, did they do uh, the gender reveal? Congrats, but how'd they do the gender reveal? They just did like a, like a cake and like the thing, or no, it was like a pumpkin for Halloween, and like the thing inside was either blue or pink, and they were like, uh, yeah, that was it. What was there the thing blue. inside the pumpkin? Like a, a pink dildo. Bomb. <laughs> no, it was like a smoke bomb, a pink dildo. Yeah, it was a pink dildo. Yeah, that's Jamie. the first uh, memory for the child. <laughs> the a fuck? pink dildo represents a girl. And then on their 18th birthday, they'll give it to her. What that's- is up with you? What what sort of scenes have you shot today, Jamie? You're in a weird headspace. All day. You know what's funny? When Jamie no, said the energy know- in my house is off, I picture like, Jack being really nice and like Cutter being super positive. <laughs> you know, just like, oh my god! Oh my god! My fucking kids are driving me crazy. Dildo? Hold on a second, because both these answers I think are kind of <laughs> whack. Okay, Jamie said pink dildo, right? Like very un Jamie that comment. Just like the last thing you would think <laughs> Jamie would say. She's ashamed. It was a very weird thing to say, Jamie. Very out of touch, like yeah. out of place. <laughs> And look, we Poor applaud case. you for taking a risk. <laughs> you know what? It's been the theme of my day. <laughs> You've been taking risks today, Jay? Yeah, what was it? What was it that made you think that was going to land? I've just been taking risks all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it can say on your tombstone. Beloved sister, mother, risk taker. What else have you been to? Are you talking about their scene work? You've been taking risks. 
<laughs> Let's hear it, Jane. What what you what was it's just like day? I just it's a risk on day for you. <laughs> what? Is there a director I, you wanted to impress? It was a new guy. He was cool. Mm. But I was like I was intentional. I was like, today I want to go take some risks. Like, I was like thinking that. I hope you didn't say to pink dildo anybody on set and fucking. No, but I just don't know if it was landing. I got to be honest. Like I came home and I'm like, did that go well today? Like, I'm so confused. <laughs> what? So what I were, keep wondering what were if like people went home tonight and they were like, what the fuck was wrong with Jamie? He only gave me after my very first take, he like came up. He's like, okay. Two Enough things, with the like, pink dildo stuff, he said. Pretty much. Like, I think he was like, okay, whoa. <laughs> two, just two notes. Do this, this line this way, this line this way. I'm like, okay. And then he never gave me any notes. But, you know, if he liked to take, if he said like, kupute or something. And Sounds like he you said, never heard that word. I, I, I heard it 15 times today, but not always for me. But it was like how we know <laughs> yeah. he liked to take. And for real, he heard that word. He liked Tess? all of them today. Huh? You know that word? No, 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 no. I'm just, oh. I was making a joke about her never hearing it from the director. Today. Or like Capuli or something like that. Is he Italian? Know. What is no. that? But, and then he would just say cut if he like needs once more. And okay. So wait, can you, what, what do you, like when you were like, I'm going to take a risk. Can you tell us the first risk you took? Yeah, this is going to be no, good. No, it's more just like, I'm going to, normally I would play it like a scene you know, like a normal person. And I think I was like, just going to get my character's kind of weird and funky anyway. So I thought I was just going to play up that side of her in this scene a little bit. Like, I'm going to let her be a little funky here. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to let her be like a little more playful and less controlled. And in the end of the day, they brought me back into a more controlled performance. So like for me, I think I left being like, oh, maybe I just can't do that. Or like maybe it just was the right time. I don't know. I it's, think it's I think important when you've to also, find like, the boundary. What is that? What do you mean? Like take a risk, <laughs> you know what I mean? And have the director reel you in. Like there's a lot of, a lot of yeah. actors do that. Like Daniel Day Lewis on There Will Be Blood. Like I guess his first, when they started filming Paul Thomas Anderson, he was doing this voice and Paul Thomas Anderson was like, what is, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know? And like, this is Daniel Day Lewis, one of the greatest living actors. And he had to like, kind of reel him that. back that in a little bit. Better. And, you should. You should be able to want to take risks, right? Because then you're just boring. Well, that's see, watch. and I've never been that way. And I think that I'm like so in this place now where I'm like, I want to like elevate my acting. Like I really want, like I've been, I'm just like interested in it. I'm just, I find myself really curious about the craft of acting and the way different people do things. And I'm like wanting to be more experimental. It's just like, it's just different. I've never kind of been this way about acting. So when I, also I've been on this, this show for a year and a half, so it's like I can have a little fun. And you just kind of carried that risk taking into the pod tonight, you know. And I came in to... hot. <laughs> That's I good. Came no. in hot. Hey guys, real quick before we get back to the pod, today's pod is brought to you by the kind folks at Zocdoc. You know, um, being a uh, man, I find this sort of uh, trying to book myself appointments. To be very difficult. I don't know what it is about uh, us men. We don't like to kind of take care of ourselves. It's very hard. I don't know how to find doctors. I don't like, do you Yelp doctors? Do you go in the, the yellow book? Is that still around? No. Uh, Z- ZocDoc makes it very easy. It's all in network. You give me your insurance. It gives you a whole list of doctors that are in network, highly reviewed, um, and you can sort by the type of doctor that you want. Do you need an ear, nose, and throat? Do you need to check for an STD? You can do all that on ZocDoc. On ZocDoc, you could find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth, fix an achy back, get that mold checked out, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. That's right. So go to ZocDoc.com slash pajama and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash pajama, ZocDoc.com slash pajama. I'm, I'm also it. a little roided up. I'm on steroids right now because the toe. Yeah, no, not the toe because I had like a treatment, medical treatment last week in New York. And t- last time I had a reaction where my lips blew up and I actually loved it. Cause I was like, Oh, like 
it looks like I have like fake lips, but they don't look fake because they're like mine and they're just swollen. And I like loved it because I've always wanted like bigger lips. And so they didn't want me to have that allergic reaction this time. So they made me take steroids. And today was my like taper down. But let me tell you, I've been feeling them. Was the only reaction your lips blowing up? Last time? Yes. Yeah. It was just like a swollen mouth. I feel, I feel like, isn't it better to just let your lips swell up than have to take steroids? Yes, but when you show an allergic reaction to something, sometimes mm. the second time you get it can be a much worse reaction. And the, he just didn't know how my body was going to react. So he just wanted to take any risk out. Like I could have gotten hives. It could have gotten high fever. Like he didn't know. So he just wanted to keep it safe. What, what percentage of women that you know have had lip injections, even if just once? 50. Whoa, 50. Half? Maybe less. Maybe a little less. 40. I, ever, I, I mean, so many Botox. Your, your, your group is going to be a higher percentage. Like your friend. More lips, Botox I don't than think, lips? Yes, yes. Lips is like, lips I find is very hard to do because most of the time they look fake. Do you agree? Yeah. Well, it's one of those things I think you have to keep up and your lips eventually need to keep getting like the skin stretches and you need more filler. And by because the time you've done bumpy. it for so long, it's like, yeah. They get, that's what I wanted to bring up. Cause I've noticed going out on dates with these girls. And sometimes when you see like their makeup off, you see these like little yeah. like marks around their lips and you're yeah. like, oh, that's not see. worth it to me. See, no way that it's not good at all. I, the, the, I want, I want bigger lips so bad, but I can't cause that shit. But you know, like Joe Rogan talks about this all the time where like what happens with people when you do stuff to your face is like, you're, you're like, you're, your face is supposed to look a certain way that like for your face, your body or whatever, that when you do change it with most people, like you look at someone and you're like, huh, like, yeah, yeah. Like you're, no, she's pretty, but something like your brain can't place it because you're like, what? It's not natural. Yeah, it's not natural, and you're trying to figure it out. So, like, you have this kind of like, ah, uh, like I don't know. It's yeah. just like it doesn't. It's like a puzzle piece where you're like, no, this is supposed to go here, but like for some reason, it's not fitting in the spot. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's very. Uh, it's very. Where I have seen it work for girls is if a girl has like one big lip and one little lip, and then she just does one lip to like match the other lip. Then I've seen it where it's like, oh, that looks good. Yeah. But most women I've seen get stuff done on their lips uh maybe the first time it's okay so get to end and like all that it just becomes like a you bad... you just want to avoid the even the like raising the question in someone you know if you get surgery and then the surgery that you get it elicits a response from one of your friends be like, hmm. or like even someone you meet like oh like is that that the the elicitation is that a word Eliciting a response is already too much. Like you, you don't want to know when somebody's had work done. That's yeah. Good, it's like the opposite of when you surgery. work out. You know, it's like you want someone to be like, "Are you working out?" Like you know, you want right. to be like, "Yes, I am." Where you know, the right. surgery is like you. Yeah, when no one says anything, it's it's <clears> Jamie. You know what else? I just wanted to ask you. That you reminded me when you turned around. When you're in your house and you hear, and Cass, you too, when you hear like the front door open, even if you know like, like oh, Cutter's coming home, are you like, Cutter, or do you just not say anything? I hold my breath for a minute to hear, because like, <laughs> I know his sounds. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know his yeah, route yeah. when he comes in the door. I know he goes and checks the locks and the lights and he takes his shoes off. Like, I just know, I would know it was him and I would hear him pour a bowl of cereal, you know? Mm -hmm. And if it was a different pattern, I'd know right away. So I literally, like, I would say there's like five to six seconds of me, like, holding my breath, listening every time. What, uh, what, what cereal are we getting into there? So Cutter now will not buy anything from General Mills because <laughs> cause there's, like, pesticides now in them, I guess, and Cheerios and shit. Yeah, so and, like, all food, you mean? So we can only get, like, Cascadian Farms. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. So no my kids fun. hate it. My kids hate it. The only one that they kind of will fuck with is the cinnamon sugar ones. Right. Yeah. Um, And then there's Panda Puffs. And Bo, I swear to God, could eat Panda Puffs 
for the rest of his life and that be it. And so we have to like limit the panda puffs. <clears throat> if I could only eat one food for the rest of my life, it'd probably be cereal. Like it's a the, bowl it's, of cereal would be the one thing you would eat for the rest of your life. Oh yeah. It's just so like, you morning, mean if you didn't have to worry about night. like being fat or anything like that? No, just like anything. Like I think like more than you know, pizza. Yeah. Because I could just, I could see myself getting sick of like the pizza and, yeah. and eating it every day. And they're just like, Oh, I don't want like, you know, we're like, man, cereal, just something about like, cause also if you want cereal to be crunchy, it's crunchy. If you want cereal to be soft, it's soft. If you want, I like, never want it to be soft. I like it. No, in but between. I'm saying if you did, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if you're, if you're saying like, I've had mm. this crunchy cereal for a month now, every single day, I want to switch it up and like have, but I'm also somebody who like, I could eat brown rice every day for the rest of my life. And I'm like, Oh, this is delicious. You know, like, I, I don't know. Yeah. But you're lying to yourself. No, I fucking love brown. Cause I hate the little brown rice, but like the long grain, regular brown rice, I fucking yeah. What love is it? it? What is it with the little guys? It's oh, like it's disgusting. Uh, it's such a different tasting thing. It's like pellets. Yeah, it's gross. I got a I got a hot pot of long grain brown rice on the stove right Delicious. now. I'm gonna chow what down. Are you it's do the with best. It? I got God you. Bless. We've been eating chicken breast and uh, asparagus every night. We've been eating asparagus been every night. Asparagus and or Brussels, like swap. We'll swap between the two. Or like Ew. a half an avocado. Are you like gassy and stinky pee? Why are those only, you need other vegetables in your life. I do eat a lot of vegetables. Sometimes I'll just cut up vegetables and like uh, okay. a little lime and salt. It's. I'm just saying as part of like the dinner meal, it's like lately it's been asparagus or Brussels sprouts, but sometimes it's do a Do you salad, know how to cook avocado. other ones? Okay. I don't generally I like <clears throat> I like my vegetables like fresh. Do you know what I mean? When I go like to your them, house like when you make shit? them, yeah, but you make them really good. You just put like a little salt and and stuff. But, yeah, that's like, all you have to asper- do. Oil and salt. Asparagus is like four minutes in the on the ninja grill that Rob got me. It's so easy. Okay. And okay. Yeah. It's literally like three and a half minutes and it's it's done. I get it. But, so uh, easy and convenient. It's so Cousin, easy. When you're convenient. when you're girlfriend comes home mm-hmm. are you somebody because i know there's people like so the person comes in they just say nothing they just stand there and then when, like somebody goes by like oh hey how are you this or they yell out like which one are you when i come home or no, when, when, she, comes when home? she comes home and you're like you know in in the house somewhere and you yell out uh okay. i don't because i i always expect it like i'm never caught off guard in my home my fortress wow. yeah i have cameras like i i have like a 360 have view. you locked down on security a little bit more since the uh incident <clears throat> the question the, the the stolen bicycle no yeah. i have the, i had the systems already in place i just y- didn't use them well okay mm-hmm. so that's that's the case with me i i will when i come home I'll yell out just because as a woman alone in a house i understand that you feel differently than a man would yeah, and I go, hey, it's me. I did I did yeah. have somebody I dated for a while <laughs> that you guys know. I would come home and I'd try different voices. And I <laughs> had this pit where I was some foreign neighbor who just happened to walk in and she got <laughs> she got really mad. And then after a while she she got it. But like the first couple of times, she's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I don't think that's the move, you know, but it is kind of funny. It is kind of funny. I do like to announce myself. When uh when you're so Kasim is now streaming on Twitch, right, Beth? Yep, twitch.tv. Twitch.tv slash Kasim G. Mm-hmm. You can find our boy there. So mm-hmm. I hear about people doing these 24 hour streams. Yeah. Where like obviously they start a stream and they go for 24 hours. How yeah. long I want to hear Cass first and then Yami Lee. What Cass, how long do you think you could go for? It would there would have to be the right type of motivation. Like I just streamed two hours today because it just, you know, I'm still kind of working out the kinks. I, I I'm still learning how to use the site, like how all the like the software works, and like when somebody subscribes to you, you got to make sure the alert pops up, and like how to <clears throat> how to like notify other platforms that. You know, I had to make like a YouTube video to let people know that I'm on. It's it's a whole it's a whole thing, and I fucking hate it. But there is a sort of freedom of being on Twitch that is nice, and 
You just play video games? No, I, I just chat. I just sit and chat and I'll look at news. Like today we talked about, uh, or yesterday we talked about Kanye and the whole anti-Semitism thing. Um, <clears throat> just chat. But like Ashley will play games and chat. I would love to play games. I think I need a new uh, computer for that. Uh, But um, yeah, if I had to, like I have some friends. So, so to your point, I have some friends who had a sub goal, right? And so they hit a thousand subs. And when they hit a thousand subs, they're like, we're going to do a 24 hour as a joke, a 24 hour construction uh, uh, simulator game. And we're going to play it for 24 hours because it'll be hilarious and excruciating. And so, so now this Friday they have to, to do it. Do. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah, people do that all the time because it also is like this, uh, <clears throat> this sort of like career rewards hours spent, which is always what I hated about streaming is like it rewards p- people the longer that they're on the site. And I've always been more of a fan of like a uh, balance and like not having to you know sit there all day but like these are also champagne problems like i'm lucky enough to have enough people to like chill and watch yeah so if i have to sit for a few hours it's great like uh, anything i always compare to like slanging tvs at best buy everything that i do is better than that so I, I can't really complain too much um but yeah i've seen people do like multiple days straight and they leave the camera on while they're sleeping i've seen that yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, you okay, Amy? I saw you have a little. Yeah, I wrong pipe, and it was Topo Chico, so it fucked me up. Um, oh, there's risks. Wait, You're people a will just water. like allow themselves to be sleeping. Yeah. What if people yeah. so, go like figure out where they live and shit? Uh, that that is a problem. That is a, being docs is a big problem. You know, some people being what are under contract docs, so like where somebody will um put your address or your information out in the world for people to like come find you that's, that's why like simple. remember when people were getting swatted and people would like swat other people's houses and 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 the fbi would show up and like people um the whole problem people died right one person died there's a documentary about it on on uh i think like it was, it was fake swat teams <laughs> no. no 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 so it, somebody will be streaming and then they somebody else calls the SWAT team on them and says like, Oh, this person is a bomb threat or committing threatens to commit suicide, all different things they've, they've done. So like, so imagine you're sitting here right now doing this. If we were live on Twitch and, and all of a sudden it was the SWAT like, team come in. Right. And it was like, bang, bang, bang. And it was like, I right, get that like kicked in the fucking door there. And like, you know, mm-hmm. but, and also what happens a lot is it's a kid in his parents' house in a room so he doesn't even know but like the parents open the door and like the SWAT team fucking rushes in has like <sighs> guns to their heads and yeah. then people are watching this stuff like how I'm watching you on Zoom pe- everybody is sitting there watching it and then like talking about it in the chat like oh my god can you believe this is happening that's just so fucked up and one person they actually killed the person like the SWAT team well, well, I don't know the details of it do you know the details Cass? Um, of that specific one where the person died. Uh, <clears throat> I don't really remember, but, um, you know how like the police sometimes handle situations incorrectly. And I think it just like they, they, this one guy got swatted and somebody came in and like a little bit of resistance happened and, and the guy was, they shot the guy. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's gnarly. And so and and me and Rob used to watch a lot of like live streamers and we we kind of sat there both like I can't believe these guys have like have to do this, you know. But it, there is something like Perry Caravello um who also is is a streamer. Um there's what like What does it you do know, for you to watch these people though? You're just like you get to like is it why I like reality television? So so what we're getting to is like parasocial relationships, right? Parasocial relationships are people forming attachments to the people mm-hmm. that they watch online, people they've never met, but they feel like they have a connection to because they watch this person. Eight That's hours how I feel about Bravo people. Yeah. And imagine if a Bravo person was on TV eight hours a day, just talk and you could type to him or her and you could interact with them and they were just like 
accessible. See, I don't to want them. to interact, but I understand. Yes. Right. And so um, this is like it's a it's a level of celebrity. And this started kind of on YouTube where we, you know, we were on YouTube and people were just like sinking all these hours watching our videos. But now when you're on Twitch, it's live. <clears throat> when I was on YouTube back in the day, it would be a video and it would just be something I edited and it went up. But now literally you can watch people that you really like and then send them money or send them a, 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 a comment and they'll see it. And a lot of these people just want that sort of interaction. Ultimately, I think there is a like the amount of people that are just lonely now is probably yeah. higher than ever. And the pandemic, everyone was stuck at home. And so the only things and then, you know, my ex had a stalker like it, it, it all all these things are kind of yeah. happening at the same time where people were trapped at home. OK, what am I going to do? I'm going to listen to podcasts. I'm going to watch streams. I'm going to watch people do their thing. And then all of a sudden, like these people that you live with every day, like I, when I listen to podcasts, I listen to certain ones just because I'm so familiar with the, like, I like the pod, but like when I put them on, there's a familiarity that's like a comfort and a safety. Like when you watch your reality shows or, or, you know, and you hear the voice of that person, that's that voice, like this, the Bigfoot, the guy who I, who's, whose podcast I listen to the Sasquatch podcast, he has, I listen to it at night before I go to sleep. And so I, I, I hear it and I have like, oh, okay. Now it's like, now my day's ending. I'm listening to this guy. It's like a soothing voice and it's, there's a sense of thing. And if he walked in, I saw him on the street one day, I'd be like, oh fuck, it's Wes. Do you know what I mean? And no one else knows who this guy is. And that's essentially what's happened is like, everyone's formed attachments to very niche people online. Everyone's lonelier than they've ever been. No one's fucking no, like no one has any real relation. I mean, no I'm, I'm being very, fucking. I'm being very, very general, but fucking is down. The charts came out. The articles are out. The amount of fucking is down. The amount of people having sex. And, and ultimately I think people are dealing with their loneliness and their stress of their jobs or whatever by watching people online. And, and for the most part, everyone's good, but there is a group of people that get too attached. A certain percentage of people get too attached and those sometimes can lead to really weird comments, messages, people showing yeah. up to your house. And it's Oof. like, uh, and I, and, and when I was on YouTube years ago, I developed a really bad anxiety. I had like panic attacks for the first time. I didn't want to leave my house. I'm so much better now. And I, I think I, part of what's exciting about getting back into content creation is like knowing that I could probably do this without the same sort of fear and anxiety that I had before. But um, yeah, wow. I mean, me and Rob, we, we have like a parasocial relationship with Perry, even though we, we kind of know him, but we've never actually physically met him, but we do like me and him will send each other clips of Perry doing things like, look what Perry did today. You know, like, look what he said. And we're just two guys who really like this one guy who has who streams yeah. to like four or 500 people online. It's like a very niche thing. It's not, it's not, there's not three network channels and we're all watching Johnny Carson and he's got 30 million people that watch him every night. Viewing the viewing experience is so fractured and specific and divided that we can all really there's be fans of someone. Yep. And that be fans of someone that no one's ever heard of. And, and yes. Uh, it's interesting that you say fucking is down because I would have thought fucking was up. I would have thought fucking to well, be ex- honest. Was explain way- why. Well, you're thinking of why single do you think people. It's way up? Oh, because uh, yeah, of yeah, because of hookup culture. Of hookup culture, but also these mm-hmm. apps. Like, there's now a platform for millions of people who were too shy to ever approach somebody, but also there are people who quite frankly, were maybe like not attractive. So they didn't have a certain like what we're now like, they'll just go on these apps and they'll just go into every single person's inbox. And it's like, you want to fuck, you want to fuck, you want to fuck. And even if it's one out of a hundred people say yes, they weren't doing that before, you know? And some people were like, of course, there's always people at bars and that, that there's a hookup culture there. But this, like, I am not that like when I was younger, I was going dating, looking just for sex. Like I wanted sex where now I want a relationship. But people who I know now who only want sex, like 
they've never seen anything like what's going on right now in the world. Where yes. it's just so fucking and so I, I, like I agree with you. I think I think I think part of what came out and there's like this article that made its rounds and and I think it's it's data that probably took into account the pandemic um the last the year before you know it's probably a year old um like scientific study so everyone generally w- w- had was worried about covid and was at home and so like fucking dramatically went down right um i do i i do think it is easier to to have the potential of fucking i would like to think that that translates to actual fucking I don't know if it for me for me it's tend to like I've always been in relationships so it's kind of always been the same so you can put like voice notes now on your dating profiles on some of these apps and some of them are so crazy that like what? these girls put on like I was listening to one uh the other day and this girl was like I know I got these big old knockers but guess what I also got a big old personality and you're going to love it like you know just like mm-hmm. and then there's other girls who are just like I want to have fun and I'm that you know there's there's girls who say on their profile like I just broke up with my boyfriend and I'm not looking for anything serious I just want to have a good time then there's other girls who are like their pictures are them like bent over a thing and it's just like yeah like looking at you know there's because again if you look through a hundred profiles you know you only need five like that where you know to be like whoa like you know where they're yeah I forget. There was like a famous one that made its rounds and I actually saw it one time. I think it, or it was like a girl who stole the line, but it was like uh it was like fat, waxed, fully vaxxed and ready to fuck like, you know, just yeah. th- there are these girls yeah, who are yeah. like who are just like, yeah, I'm, I I want to fucking party, like whether it's because You know, I appreciate the upfrontness, but to me, even though it was so long ago, like some of my best To me, some of the most fun about dating was the mystery of the person and like it's slowly revealing itself over time. Like, you know, are they into this? What do they like? Like, that's part of like getting to know someone in a conversation. Like you throw all the shit out there with me and I get it. It it helps, you know, kind of cherry pick a little bit for you. But I don't know. To me, that was very fun and a fun part of dating. Do you think totally the opposite? Do you guys think, I don't know if there's been a, this feels like a black mirror thing, but do you think one day in the future based the computer, some computer will take everything we've ever done online, every uh, comment we've left, every podcast we've done, every podcast we've listened to, take it all that information, put it in on, into a, a program that spits out, uh, like our, a profile for us and then it'll tell us exactly who our match is you know based on like it's, all it's our... exactly what we're headed where we're headed but that's like what matchmakers do which is different data right right like but like imagine with other stuff imagine you're talking all like your data. gattaca data yeah well that's not all your data the stuff you've done on the internet is not all your data sure but like eventually everything that we do it pretty like, much will be soon think about all the stuff that you do that's well, for you, it's different because you're off the grid. But like, I'll I'll just give you an example of like uh, a day uh, that I had. Right, so I would get up. Um, first thing I would do is like check Twitter, right, and just check and see what's going on, and like um, fire off a couple emails. Then I would uh, make coffee. My coffee machine isn't connected to the internet, so that would be off. But I would. Uh, Work but out. you buy coffee when you grocery shop, and that's right. on your so, credit card. So I work out. Everything's logged in an app. My workouts. It, it, it tracks to Apple the Apple like fitness thing. So it's everything is logged in. How long I worked out, the fitness. I would go to Whole Foods. I use my code Whole Foods. Everything's paid for with an online credit card, no physical cash or anything. So and then I come home. Uh, I'll make dinner. It can probably guess what I'm I'm having for dinner based on the groceries I had. But everything that I've done, most of the things I've done in the day is probably tracked by some sort of app or program. And so what's to stop somebody one day to take all that information, funnel it in, be like, boom, you're this guy, like China does with their social credit score. And then here's, we actually found you, your match. 
She actually lives uh, 45 minutes away. She does all this stuff. And based on the things that you've done, we find you most compatible, taking into astrology, all that bullshit, taking all the information, how old you are, what movies you've seen, the food that you're eating. You guys are most compatible. And we've we've set up a date for you this Friday. We already know you're free. See you there. Yeah, I think the reason why, like, because now that you say the credit card, I'm like, oh, yeah, but... Like, you know, your phone knows a lot of stuff about you that my phone doesn't. Like, they're working out. My phone has no clue. The Like, your I watch or whatever, like, tracks your sleep, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, that's track a big thing. The, the ring, those people Because that's, that's such a big thing to me of, like, the person you date, if they're like, oh, sleep doesn't matter to me. Or they're like, I wake up every day at 6 a.m. Like, that to me is like. Yeah. And my technology has no idea, like, because I don't even use technology when I wake up. You know what I mean? Like, I take a certain amount of time and then, like, a very long time before bed to, like, I'll sometimes I do, like, six hours before bed with, like, zero technology. But uh, the reason I think I was, like, my brain was, like, "Uh uh-uh right away is because I'm watching Love is Blind right now. Me too. Uh, Jamie, did you finish the three out of the first four episodes? Yes. Oh, we have to talk about what might be, it, to me, one of the all-time reality show moments when the guy put the fucking eye drops in his eye. What, to cry? Yeah. Oh, Jamie. The, the Asian guy? Yeah. He's terrible. Somebody fake cried on the show? He, He's Oh, terrible. my God. It's the best ever. But, but, but to finish off with this thing, it's like they're in those pods just talking to each other for days and days and days and getting all the information about the other person and like learning everything this and then they get out and they're like oh this isn't the person i thought like it was you know what i mean so that's what my you know what but but i get that but at the same time even talking to somebody like a couple of times a day for three weeks through a wall you still don't know everything about them and you're still having your best conversation so like to say that that when they get out oh well clearly you fell in love with them there when there was no looks and now it's different and all the family and this i'm like yeah but you also still didn't know the person a whole lot <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, I like i don't know right, why they're fooling think, everybody that it's like looks or not with this like three weeks is not that long for sure but i i agree with you but i think like sometimes they're like talking for three weeks or whatever they're so connected to this and like 30 minutes into it they're like i don't know it's just the the facial expressions and the way that i'm seeing this person like it's energy were, right energy and also they even say they go i thought when she was doing this stuff she was yes. smiling yes i saw that too but now that i see her and she's not smiling doing it it makes me think she's a totally different person you know so i feel like mm. to me like it would be hard for uh and also like I think, you know, dating the last couple of people I did, like when they, like a lot of the stuff that they would be like, I'm into this. And then I would like hear about that and be like, oh, I don't like that. But when, you know, uh, like the last girl I did was into art and like hearing about the art and like the places she took me, I was like, holy shit, like this is fucking dope. Where normally I would have just been like, nah, like I, I want nothing to do with it, yeah. you know? So it's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how that would work. I- I think most people eventually would succumb to it. You know what I mean? They're, it's the same thing that a, I, a, Apple does with their iPhones. When you're texting somebody who has an Android phone, you are, if you have an Android, you're like, your text bubbles green. You don't get, like, you can't send pictures and video. Like when Gabby's on text with us. And when, and remember when Gabby finally got an iPhone, she was like, hey guys, like, I got one. You know, like it was like, it used to be like, Jamie liked Gabby's text. Yes. And I'm like, oh, I thought she didn't get an iPhone. I thought she just uses her email to do iChat with us. Oh, I, I, I thought, I thought she got a new one. And, and either way, I know other folks that are like, oh, yeah, I got an iPhone. Like, I can, we can finally do. We can finally send messages and and, uh, video to each other without having to worry. It's most people will just just to fit in, even if they hold out, I think will eventually come around. If it means like, hey, dude, yeah, I just met the love of my life, dude. The app just figured it out. She said the app said that she lived 45 minutes away and we just like we eat the same stuff and we do the same things and we we like this. And I don't know what I would do if I wasn't on this app. And then eventually, I think most people might take a few years for people to trust it. But enough people are using that like matchmaking app or whatever it ends up being. That's only available on Apple? Well, just like whatever. It wouldn't (laughs) matter. Yeah. I mean, Apple, Google, these are people like probably more like Google and and Facebook, even though it's probably more Google now. 
these are companies that would eventually probably do everything. Amazon is another company. It knows everything that you're buying. Um, it knows what you're watching, at least on its own app. But eventually, I think we'll get to that point. And it might be when we're old, but I think it could be within our lifetimes. And I would be all for it. I think you're right, but I think it's going to be very different than we think it than we're talking about. Like, I don't think the algorithm is going to be based on like, this is what you eat and you do that. I think it's going to be like, uh, like, I think they're going to have to, like, AI is going to look into over the years, what has made successful relationships. And I think it's going to be stuff that is, is not as basic as we think, you know, <laughs> like, oh, it knows that I buy bananas, like, or I drink, co like, because I don't like coffee is and caffeine is a huge thing in your life where to me it's zero, but that has yeah. no effect on like, if I'm dating a girl and she's like obsessed with caffeine, it, it matters to me zero. You know what I mean? I think the algorithm is going to be like, you know, it's going to be like trauma and, you know, just stuff like that stuff about our parents and mm -hmm. what kind of childhood we had. Like, I think it's going to be like deep shit, but Cass, so what happens in love is blind is this girl is talking to these two guys and she's like, eh, she's like, I don't, she's like just this one guy. Like he's, he's something about him is like, he's too cool and calm and collected. Like, I just, I don't know. I, I could see myself having a nice life with him, but not forever. Like I just, there's something I can't put my finger on at this. And then she says no to him and they show his like post interview. And he's like, are you guys rolling? And they're like, uh, yeah. And he's like, okay, hold on. And he pulls out the eye drops and he's like, bink, 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 like in his eyes. And then he puts his head down. He's like, it's okay that I'm doing this. Right. And they were like, uh, yeah, if your eyes are bothering you and then like his, the tears are running down his face and he's like, okay. He's like, he's like, you know, I really just think like, I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> he's like, I'm really proud of myself for like being able to open up to da da da. And then he's like, uh, He's like, I never thought I'd, I'd meet a woman in here that could bring me to tears. Like, he's like he just, thought they were going to cut that or something, cut the the eye drop part. A hundred percent. And he's just so like, good. dude, what he says is like, this girl is like, I forget what the question is. I'm going to be way off, but she's like, you know, what's the, like, how do, how do you know that you're ready for a serious relationship? And he's like, well, he's like, you know, I took a three month trip to Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, well, and he's like, and that was a, a, a month stop in Duali. And then I took a month over here. And then he's like, and then after a month here, and then I went to Taipei. And like, he's just saying all this stuff that you're like, and he's like, you know, and the company, uh, what did he say? He was like, I tuned him out. I like, I probably picked up my phone when he was on a lot of the time. He was like, he was like, the expense account was fat. Like, you know, or like he says so that we're like, this guy is just so like, uh, like he is, it's just bad. It's real bad. That's good. Uh, I, I, I got to check it out. We we just finished uh, The Mole. And, uh, you know, we've been watching Unsolved Mysteries. A lot of good TV right now. I don't know if you're watching any of the, the Game of Thrones, Jamie. I don't know if that shows your vibe or not. I've never seen it. I'd say you enjoy it. I watched it I'm during sure COVID. I'm sure I would. It was, it, 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 I tried watching the first episode so many times and could never get into it. And then COVID was like, I mean, uh, here's the thing. And like, I got, I watched it. It was good, but I haven't, I'm not going to watch this new thing. I don't really care. The new thing is good. If you do uh, decide to come around to it. Um, I do want to address uh, an email that we got. Remember the, the, the guy who's Bumble profile, Josh, that we had. Yeah. And then we had uh, and a girl somebody. Wrote in. Okay. So wait, really quick. I just want to ask Jamie, Jamie yeah. on a 24 hour stream. How long do you think you'd be able to last? 18 like, hours. 18. Like if, if the goal was to hit 24 and you could just, you could leave it the camera right where it is right there. And you just had to, you know, like you could cook, you could eat, you could, you, you could watch TV if you wanted. Like you don't have hours. to be engaging 18 hours. There's your okay. answer. All right. I, I'm, I could easily do 40 hours. Easy. Why? What's that? What happens at 40? No, I just, I just know, like I even the other You're night, have like, to I, now, dude. I went to go play poker at four in the afternoon, and I got home at noon the next day. Like, and I wasn't trying to do anything. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, oh, okay, like I'm going to play poker. So it's like, if I was actually pushing myself to reach some sort of goal, like I, I, I feel like 48 hours sounds like a lot, and I know 36 I can do, like, you know, fine. So, well. 
All right. uh, but I think 24 hours is something I can Let's do test like, it. without trying. Let's no, test it when you come here. When you come back, we'll be streaming. I could never you. go to your house ever again with that cat. Oh, that's right. What a loss. I got to rethink this relationship. Choose her or me. Okay, so um, in this email, by the way. Uh, I'll never be scared when you come home, babe. <laughs> she, she says um, she wanted to stay anonymous, right? Remember we read that email yeah. and she wanted to stay anonymous. We got an email from her two days ago. She says, good to know that when someone asks for something to be anonymous, that you don't keep it anonymous. Thanks a lot, guys. And I want to ask you guys, does she not know what anonymous means or did we screw up? I don't remember. We didn't say her name. So then how, well, then what could we have done? That's all it is. Did she mean don't read this? Don't read this online. <laughs> so then why I think send it to us? I... I'm, to give look, us I'm not going to go back and rewatch. Wait, re, but I what's was her very email careful say? Right? To, what does the email say right now? The, that was it. The, that was the, it. The, the first email said, since you see my email, you know my name, but I'd like to stay anonymous so my friendship with him isn't shredded. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. But if she says, I'd like to stay didn't say, anonymous. It didn't say, don't, this is for your information. Don't read this online. It didn't say that. But even it that first line that. almost sounds like, she uh, the the first line should be hey don't read this on the podcast if she's saying you see my email i want to remain anonymous that's almost like her saying when you read this on the podcast don't say my email right which when you say you want to stay anonymous all that means to me and, and just going forward if you email other podcasts it just means we're not going to say your name however Wait, you gave so us this... enough information that where i think he could have guessed who it is who it was and i think that's probably what happened but this uh, di- but this second email was literally one sentence long two it said uh the, the second <laughs> one was thanks a lot guys yeah right because what happened was we uh, jamie uh when you heard with the, t- the the toe incident yeah we read a email from him last <gasps> week where oh. he said you want to read that, Cass, where he said uh, he yeah. thinks he knew who it was? Oh, and- uh, okay. No, you don't have to read it. Listeners heard it already. Right. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I obviously, like, he reached out to her and was like, Yeah, hey, I'll, he- I'll read you his email real fast. My this God, is- this is so crazy. People this are is some drama. We've podcast. got some drama. And, 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 you know, look, we didn't say her name, but if we did, I will stand, I will I'll apologize and correct myself. I'm just too lazy to go back and actually watch our show. I'm he so says, happy I'm not in that room anymore, and I don't have to worry about if I did. Eh, I don't think any of us have to worry. It says, hey, <laughs> hey again, PJ Panties. I'm not going to lie. I think I have an idea who that was that wrote in saying they dated me. I'm not 100% sure, but it sounds like I did some unintention- unintentional damage. There were some pretty wild accusations being thrown out that I feel only a call into the pod would help to respond to and give some backstory. And that shirtless pic was from two months ago, so I must have ballooned hard over the last few weeks. Ha ha. Also, Rob's right and has an insane memory. I am the one who wrote in super early in the pod about working at Disneyland and for Allison Jones. Wow. Um, so look, he's a, he gave us his phone number too, if that's something we want to uh, travel, that that road we want to travel down. Oh, like but I just want to call say, him on the pod? I will tell the the, the anonymous <laughs> person. This. Look at Jamie. She's so excited. Dude, this, this is, is like your own real like, reality show. Yeah. <laughs> We've got yeah. like real fan interaction and like, this is cool. Well, um, I think she's not even a fan. She not just, anymore. He, I want to. No, because what happened was I guess he put on his Instagram oh. like, hey, I'm on this podcast. Wait, so she's not even a listener? She's not even a listener. She's bossing us. She's giving us grief. Well, I'm sorry uh, that you th- maybe misinterpreted what anonymous meant. Um, I'm, I'm sure your intentions were pure, but you got to be careful when you're writing into a pod about somebody you dated. It was very salacious, and we ate that up very quickly. And also, if anybody wants to write us an email to not read on the pod, just don't write don't the email. Don't write an email. Yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, don't don't trust us uh, is the lesson. But if you do want to write us an email, ask pajamafans at gmail.com. Be very specific on whether or not we can read it. Otherwise, we're just going to read it. We didn't um, even get to talk about my romantic date with Cutter last night, Jamie. I know. I don't know oh. anything about it. You got, well, we, have, we have five minutes. In. You want te- to in talk? In Let's close it out with the hear about your date with Cutter. Yeah, no, nothing happened. We just went to dinner with Cutter. He's the best. And we talked he said about he saw. And- he said he saw your apartment. I said, how is it? He goes, exactly how you would expect it to be. Which is Which means what? Very Not few a damn things, thing in it. Clean, yeah. nice. I'll take it. That's what he I said. I like that. 
I said, yeah. that's exactly uh, how yeah. I expected it to be. You're right. You look like you're being interviewed for a Netflix true crime show right Me? now. No, him. It's oh, just like Rob. the light in the dark, just two camera. Jamie, you know how you always say like uh, you want to be th- or like, you know, you, you don't know if people see you as somebody with MS or people think about it all the time. Like, uh, you know, Cutter was talking to me or we were talking about like the pickleball court. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be so great. Like, I can't wait for pickleball. And, and he said, maybe it'll be ready for Thanksgiving. And I'm like picturing like the teams and us playing. And then like today I was sitting around and I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Jamie can't play pickleball. Right. So like, I, Not I unless that, you hit it right to me, I can. I will. But also, but just just so you know, like. That is I, nice. No, yeah. When you, when you think about it, like, you're like, my I don't energy want feels think like somebody that participates. I like it. A hundred percent. Like I wouldn't even. I like you know, it. I, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot all about it, Amy. Um, okay, that's the pod, guys. Okay. Another week. Thank you so much. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Um, we're on TikTok now. We have a subreddit r slash pajama pants podcast. Jamie and I are on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Rob's off the grid. Do not try and contact him. You can email us at askpajamapants at gmail dot com. If you're watching this on YouTube, click subscribe. It doesn't hurt. It's free. You can even click that little bell. That way you know when our videos go live every week, which right now is every Tuesday morning. Tuesday. Um, you guys have anything before we go? Apple. You'll never know when I'm sleeping, Google. Wow, you don't dude. know when I eat. You're intense. Amazon. You are intense. <laughs>